Welcome to our lecture online. So far we've only been adding vectors together that have positive components. In other words, all the components point in either the positive x or the positive y direction. But what if the components are pointing in the negative direction? How do we add the vectors then? And so we have to be careful here because we do realize that all the magnitudes of all the components and all the vectors must always be positive but yet sometimes they could be pointing in a negative direction. So we have to be careful how we manage that. So here's an example of how to do that. So here we have to add two vectors together. We have vector C pointing to the right here in an upward direction, about 30 degrees above the positive x-axis. And here we have vector D that's pointing in the direction 45 degrees above the negative x-axis. The magnitude of vector C is 8. The magnitude of vector D is 3. So now we need to add them together. And just so we can see some reference here, we've added them already together using the method of parallelograms. Again, I go to the tip of vector B and I draw a line parallel to vector C. I go to the tip of vector C and draw a line parallel to vector D. And when the two meet, I draw a vector from where they start together at the two tails. And I draw a vector to where the two lines meet. And that would then be the sum of the two vectors graphically. But we also want to do it using their components. So what we need to do first is find the x and y components of each of the two vectors. Because after all, when we add vectors together, we must add the x components together and then the y components independently. So let's find c sub x. So c sub x, the x component of c, and of course, if I don't draw a little arrow on top of it, I'm only finding the magnitude of that component. So that would be equal to c times the cosine of theta sub c. So when I look at that, that would be the projection of c onto the x-axis. That would be the adjacent side to the angle. That's why I use the cosine. So in this case, that would be equal to 8 times the cosine of 30 degrees. And of course, that's 0.866. So we take 30, take the cosine, and times 8 equals, and it would be 6.93 to the two decimal places. 6.93 would be the magnitude of the x component. C sub y, that's the y component of C, is equal to C times the sine of theta sub C, which is 8 times the sine of 30 degrees, which of course is equal to 1 half. 1 half times 8, that gives me a magnitude of 4. Now we'll find the, mag the magnitude of the two components of vector D. So starting with D sub x, that is equal to, and let me draw D sub x so you can see what it looks like. So when I project D onto the x-axis, I find here this would be d sub x, and notice it's a component, it's a vector pointing to the left, and then when I project this onto the y-axis, I can see here that this would be d sub y, Oop, d sub y, like that. So here are the two components representing the vector d. To find the magnitude of the x component, that would be equal to d times the cosine of theta sub d. So here's the angle, theta sub d. This is the adjacent side to that angle. This is the hypotenuse. So it's the hypotenuse times the cosine of, of the angle. So in this case, it would be 3 times the cosine of 45 degrees. And let's see what that's equal to. So 45 times 3 equals, that's 2.12. And then the same for the y component. d sub y is equal to d times the sine of theta sub d which is equal to 3 times the sine of 45 degrees. And of course, that's also 2.12. Now here you might be puzzled and say, well, why is d sub x not a negative number? Because it's pointing to the left. Well, it's pointing to the left. The direction is negative, but the magnitude of that component must be positive because no magnitudes can ever be negative. So since we're only finding the magnitudes of those components, they all must be positive. The negative comes in when we actually add the components together because then they're vectors and of course since they're vectors and the component points to the negative direction we have to take that into account. So what we're going to do now is we're going to add the two together. So we have the resultant vector is equal to the sum of adding c plus d together. So in this case we're going to add the x components together and the y components. So this would be equal to well, the x component of c, that would be c sub x, and notice that's pointing in the positive direction. So this here, 
this would be C sub X, so you see that's pointing in the positive direction, and here this would be C sub Y when we project C onto the Y axis, so C sub Y, which is also pointing in the Y direction, so they're both positive directions, so we have C sub X plus, ooh, now, not plus, because now we're going to add the D component, or the X component of the D vector, and note that that's pointing in the negative direction, so I have to go minus d sub x in the x direction or in the i direction. Since I now write it as a vector quantity, I have to take into account that the x component is pointed to the left, so that'll give me a negative quantity there. Here, the magnitude is positive, but when I write it as a vector quantity, I must take into account the direction of that component. And then we add that to c sub y plus d sub y, because in this case, both components are pointing in the positive direction, in the j direction or the y direction. So this becomes equal to c sub x is 6.93 minus d sub x, which is 2.12 in the i direction, plus c sub y, which is 4, plus d sub y, which is 2.12 in the j direction. So now I subtract this from that, so that gives me uh, 4.81 in the i direction plus 6.12 in the j direction, and that is the resultant vector, the sum of vector c and vector d together. Now when you take a look at that, you can see that's about right. We have 6.12 in the y direction and about 4.81 in, in the x direction, so our graphical representation is not that far off from what you'd expect, and so that's how you add the vectors together. Again, special attention, the magnitude of d sub x is positive, but when we write in vector notation, I have to make that into a negative because it points in the negative direction, and that's how it's done.